Thank you, uh, Jacques. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to put a little sizzle on a training management discussion, and I'm not, I'm struggling with that, so bear with me here. But as training managers, we all know we're squeezed between providing resources to the line operation as our network partners try to fly and maximize revenue, and we are often a lot of times viewed as the roadblock to success on that. So anyway, it is a critical component. It's the back, backbone by which our airlines operate and maintain regulatory compliance. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about what we had, where we're at now, and where we're going with this process. So a little bit about our training program. I'll talk about the training management challenges, the due diligence solution, as well as the expectations, and then I'll wrap it up with a brief summary. So when you look, about, look at United Airlines flight training, as Jacques mentioned, uh, we have uh, training operations in Denver and Houston. We do have 12,000 plus pilots. We train them on seven fleets. Uh, we do initial transition and recurrent training. And you heard Captain Wygan yesterday speak of uh, some of the training that we're doing this year gets lumped into that, uh, that activity as well. The fleet of 39 FSTDs has grown here recently. We've just ordered another six devices as part of our consolidation work. And right now we have 450 uh, uh, flight instructors and evaluators across both locations. And on top of that, we are busy hiring pilots. Last year we hired 836, and this year we're on target for about 866. So when you put all of that together, uh, we conduct over 20,000 training events in, uh, in 2015, and we will for the foreseeable future. So uh, we talked a little bit about our, uh, my, our mission in flight training is to recruit hire and train pilots to safely fly the world. It's pretty straightforward, simple, but it, it, it drives home the point is what we're trying to do here. So what were the training management challenges that we experienced? Well, as most of you know, we came through a merger, Continental and United merged. And what we found very quickly after the merger and seniority list integration was that neither of the training platform, training management platforms met our needs. Uh, the, based on the IT platforms and the, just the massive and rapid growth of the pilot group. And so we struggled with that. As, as a byproduct of that, we also were looking for some training operation and cost optimization uh, along the way, which was something that we were struggling with. And then, of course, the course, uh, as I mentioned, that, that conflict that we find ourselves in with putting pilots in the right places at the right time to fly the missions that, that the revenue folks would like us to do, is how do we close that gap between what our footprints look like, our course footprints, and what we could actually produce. And so our co course footprints with days off basically average around 30 days. Uh, and we were, we were struggling to get anywhere close to that through this process. And on top of that, we drove some inefficiencies in instructor utilization. So we have an objective there to try to improve that. And then we wanted to basically get ourselves into a place to harness technology moving forward as the, uh, as the industry and the regulatory environment changes. So when you look at the regulatory environment, we, with re items that we're challenged with now, we heard about upset recovery training, we'll have to track that differently. We have fatigue awareness education training that we have to track now. Uh, the um, related aircraft differences that most of the uh, carriers are dealing with, specifically our challenges, the 757 and 767 fleet. We have to track currency, uh, display currency in that, as well as takeoff and landings, uh, and some OE challenges. So we need a system that will allow us to do all of that uh, very quickly and very efficiently. Uh, on top of that, we have a contract with our uh, pilot instructors and our ground instructors that's very complex and has a lot of uh, manual, at this stage, is, is managed very in a very manual uh, process and manner. So we were looking for some efficiencies there with our uh, scheduling team to try to help uh, really align and better utilize our resources. And then lastly is the compliance and quality control. Uh, nothing, no pro program is work, will work if you can't maintain regulatory compliance. And that's the background, that's an immovable object for all of us. So the due diligence and the solution. So we determined uh, with uh, internally that there was no decision. The decision was actually fairly easy. We needed a new training management system and we went through a very lengthy uh, RFP process. Uh, worked with a number of our folks in scheduling, IT, and myself to develop the, what we call a statement of work. And then we sought vendor input to see what was available. And some of those folks are here today and have been here for the last several years. So it was good to have that input from them. 
We conducted on-site demos. We invited them to come see us and to show us what the product would support and what we could do with it and what we couldn't do with it. And then a, an added layer of complexity was the IT work. And with the challenges in the IT environment that we see, especially around data security, we needed to make sure that the infrastructure and the architecture for the IT platform, that the platforms that we were looking at would actually support what our current IT platforms would do. And so there was a lot of work around building integration layers and, and really designing hooks into the integration layer from each of the respective programs to gather the data that we needed. Uh, we also benchmarked. We would be foolish not to benchmark against other airlines, and so we did that as well. And then ultimately, we came to the decision that was best for United Airlines was to choose the Britannica system, the Fox training management system. And uh, it was not an easy decision. It was a lengthy process, but we're very happy with where we're at today and moving forward. So there's been a lot of work done today to date, and I'll talk a little bit about that here in the next couple of slides. Oops, I went the wrong way, sorry. So when the implementation, right, the devil's in the details when it comes to the implementation, we needed to find a way to incorporate the Fox infrastructure into, into our, or the Fox system into our existing uh, structure. So the way we did that is, you've heard the adage, the one way you eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So we uh, set out to break down the implementation process into what we call work packages. Now, there were some fundamental changes in the way we were doing business and that most of the work we had done on the advanced qualification side of, of, the, of the effort and the training side was all done manually and done with spreadsheets and paper and, and uh, some Excel, uh, Excel work. And so we needed to uh, re fundamentally redo the AQP tree, what we call the AQP tree. Uh, that was in the first work package that's been done. And we just deployed work package two, which was the curriculum management side of things which curriculums would go to which pilots and which, at which time. So that was, that was a, big, a big step for us. We're currently in work package three, the development, and I have a timeline here I'll show you in just a minute, uh, which is really focused on optimizing, uh, optimization, scheduling, and, and the grading. And then the last work package is the customer, the 450 customers that we, we support internally to the training centers are the instructor evaluator group. So here's a high-level plan. You can see uh, I, when I built these slides, this was done uh, some time ago back in February. We're a little bit farther along than that. We're actually in work package three, and uh, we're testing that now. We have a team of 10 testers. We've asked some folks, uh, some young people, to come in and help us try to break it, and they are doing that very well. And, uh, but we're learning quite a bit about that, and we're really testing the two items that we uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned in work package one, really the focus on the curriculum and the AQP trees so we can ensure that the objectives and our um, TPOs and SPOs all line up and match properly. So we expect to deploy work package three later this year uh, with that and then we'll overlap work package three and work package four on the IE side of things, the instructor evaluator side of things with the bidding and vacation and uh, schedules. So if you can think about the complexity of 12,000 pilots bidding a recurrent training for recurrent training and then trying to match this up, it, it, it becomes a fairly, a very large exercise very quickly. So to give you some example, just before I move to the next set of slides, in the past, our triple, so just an example with the 777 fleet, there's about 2,500 pilots on that fleet right now. It would take the planner anywhere from three to four days to build a recurrent training schedule for a month. Uh, and so you can do, you can see that's, uh, that's pretty, uh, pretty task intensive. Currently the program will run now that we're using in the beta mode, does it in 45 minutes. And so there's a huge benefit for us there, and it allows our instructor, our schedulers to really focus on refining the system and the schedules to take advantage of, of the things that we feel are important. So what do we expect? Scheduling, as I mentioned, to improve efficiency, maximize our resources, and, and uh, timely qualification training. Uh, we want to bring pilots in and get them out as quickly as we can and comply with all of the regulatory and, and our uh, collective bargaining rules. Uh, it's a major shift in our AQP philosophy and the way we manage it. And it also is a major shift on the qualification side for us with respect to how we track instructors and devices 
as well as the qualifications to maintain compliance. So there's a large component of our instructor evaluator group, the flight instructors and evaluators that actually are line pilots as well. So while they maintain their currency and requirements inside the schoolhouses for that piece of it, they also have to maintain compliance to stay legal to fly the line. And so we have two, uh, two pronged attack there to try to manage that compliance. The part I'm excited about here in this is, is the grading side of things. And nobody likes to be graded, but uh, we have a very manual and paperwork process uh, that we are currently using now. And the biggest advantage that I see for our, our, uh, our instructor evaluators is the use of electronic grade sheets now. And then obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the ability to maintain compliance uh, as, we, as technology and regulations change. And we know that there's the regulatory environment's becoming more complex, and we need a tool to be able to help us manage that in a very efficient manner. So here's an example of a scheduling screen. I know it's an eye test. I can't read it even on my PowerPoint slide, so I don't expect you to. But this is an example of how a scheduler would define the rules and number of events uh, with the, the time frame and maximum number of events. And, and then the scheduler can actually allocate resources as necessary. So we know, for instance, we have a requirement that we can only do um, maneuvers, validations, and LOEs in a particular time frame of the day, the scheduler can actually uh, put that in there and manage to that, uh, to that requirement and schedule to that requirement. So that's a scheduling advantage. And I also, uh, just as I mentioned earlier, just some of the efficiency with the 777 that I highlighted earlier. When you look at the AQP program that we have, all of the curriculum outlines and objectives are managed through manual worksheets. And so we have a lot of quality control work that goes on behind the scenes i.e. people that have to check our work before we submit it and uh, upload it to the FAA's website. So we, we uh, find that very task intensive and it takes us a while to do that to do it properly. And then as, this, as I mentioned, this new program allows us to do this automatically and update to the website, the, share, uh, the FAA SharePoint site uh, to get approvals in a much faster manner. On the qualification side, the instructor, as I mentioned earlier, the device and instructor qualification, our devices are all FAA certified. We track that, that data that, uh, so you can't get scheduled into a device that's not certified or not qualified, and you cannot schedule a pilot or an instructor into a program, a device, or a uh, phase of training that they're not certified or qualified to do. And this is all done automatically uh, behind the scenes by the, uh, by the program once, once the rules are uh, generated. And then the last part, as I mentioned, uh, the grading side of this, uh, we will now go to an electronic uh, grade sheet, obviously less paper. The part I find most uh, uh, enjoyable about this is that we'll have some built-in quality control. I use the, anal uh, the analogy of it, when you try to buy something on the internet, if you don't put your credit card, your uh, CVV code in there, it'll kick it back and say you need to put something else in. This is exactly what will happen with the instructor. Uh, or the evaluator. So if the data is not entered properly, it won't accept it and it'll force them to go back and fix it. And uh, we've got some parameters there, as well as on the, the data side of things, we can actually program reason codes and force, uh, force uh, the instructors to give us reason codes. Now, the instructors will tell me they would like us to put all threes in their benchmark, which is our, as our standard is three. Uh, and, uh, but I've kind of resisted that because we know sto they'll, they'll take the easy way out and stove pipe and then we'll have another challenge on our hands. So we'll, uh, we're going to force them to do every code, every field as they go through and complete it. And then the last part is the pilot actually signs the grade sheet to confirm and, and they, don't agree, they don't have to agree to it, but they, they have to acknowledge that they've seen it and that that's part of the, the, uh, the uh, out processing form. So it's an exciting part for us uh, as well. The compliance side of things, when we talk about the ability to expand and change techno uh, changes technology and regula regulations change, we have a system administrator page where we can go in and define those rules. And then that will propagate itself through the system and allow us to uh, see immediately who's com where we have uh, challenges, who needs what training, where and when should something change. And so this is a big piece for us because how we put it in is really how we're going to manage the system. So we spend a lot of time making sure that the system administrator page is done properly and that the AQP objectives are done properly. Those two things are the two things we spend a lot of time focusing on. So. So ultimately, our expectations are to uh, shorten our training uh, scheduling time through automation. Uh, we want to maximize the device time and the training time that we have. 
uh, with with a better use of resources. And then, and obviously, there's a cost benefit here to us uh, because we can train more, and the need to train more will uh, will continue to grow. Uh, we have safety, greater safety assurance, and that uh, we'll maintain compliance in a highly regu regulated industry as well as uh, with the contractual uh, needs that we have. And then last but not least, we're going to provide a resource to the operation that's current and qualified wherever they may need to fly, which is, uh, is our ultimate goal. And then uh, the last couple of items here will uh, improve curriculum knowledge, data management. We'll be able to more, uh, more accurately focus in on objectives and areas that we would like to, uh, to see plus take input, provide input to our safety management systems in a much more uh, con, um, convincing manner than we do now. And then the administrative options, including the integration. Ultimately, we would like to be able to take line pilot pairings and instructor pairings and put them into there, uh, manage absences and qualifications. That's some functionality that exists. We haven't got to that point yet. Obviously, we want to get out of the starting blocks on the right foot here with the, with the basics of the program. But there's capability to grow, which is something we're very excited about. So in summary, we, uh, we, as I mentioned, we talked about some of the, I talked about some of the challenges that we had, manual processes, merger, new rules. We identified the need for a training management solution, and we uh, selected the Fox Britannica system, and it's a complete training management system for us, which is exciting. And then our expectation now is that the training management, op uh, through training management optimization, we'll be able to have a better, a better product, better uh, regulatory performance. Not that we have bad regulatory performance, it's just easier to manage this way. And that uh, we'll have a better, better throughput and capability and, and run much more effectively. Thank you very much.